In this video, we will be taking a closer look at the mechanism that governs chromatography. Specifically, we'll be talking about a uh, phenomenon known as band broadening. And we will talk about how band broadening can affect the resolution of a chromatography experiment. Furthermore, we'll look at some of the uh, practical and technical considerations that we need to take into account um, when carrying out a chromatography experiment in order to minimize the negative effects of band broadening. In the previous video, we approached the mechanism of chromatography from the standpoint of a single molecule interacting with a mobile phase and a stationary phase. However, that's not a very realistic approach. Um, the reason being that you never really have just one molecule of your, of your analyte that you're trying to purify or pass through a chromatography column. Instead, you have a lot of molecules, millions upon billions of molecules, and while we would expect for all of those molecules to behave exactly the same if they have the same identity, it turns out that that's not necessarily the case. Uh, the reason for this is that each one of the molecules does not exist by itself. It's actually interacting with other molecules of itself. Furthermore, chromatography relies on a certain degree of random motion of the molecules themselves. And what this means for us is that we cannot expect to be able to predict the exact location of a given molecule um, on a TLC plate or in a chromatography column, um, but rather be able to say statistically that a high percentage of those molecules will be present at a certain spot, which means that a very small percentage of those molecules may be a little bit further or a little bit before that spot or that, that band from the column. From a practical standpoint, this is quite important. The compound that we are interested in is going to be spread out over a section of a column or of a TLC plate uh, according to this distribution. And this leads to several effects that can uh, impact the quality of our chromatography experiment. One effect of great significance is that of band broadening. Band broadening is a phenomenon where the chemicals that are being separated in a chromatography experiment uh, go from starting off as a very tiny, tight spot. For when the uh, experiment proceeds, that tight spot kind of bleeds out to make a larger spot. As a consequence, analytes that are less retained by the stationary phase are going to bleed out more. So in other words, the TLC plates are going to have larger spots towards the top and smaller spots towards the bottom. Band broadening can have an extreme effect on the success of your chromatography experiment. To illustrate this point, take a look at the two TLC plates on the screen. On the left hand side we have a TLC plate where the sample has been spotted very lightly. On the right hand side we have a TLC plate where the sample has been applied very heavily. Now both samples contain the same exact chemicals just in different concentrations. And while the components of the sample mixture um, have the same RF values on each TLC plate, there is a difference in their resolution. In other words, uh, there is less distance separating the end of the red dot and the beginning of the blue dot in the case of a, a very heavily spotted sample. On the other hand, there is a much greater distance between the spots when we spot much more lightly. Again, this distance in between spots corresponds to the resolution of the experiment. The larger the distance between the spots, the better the resolution. Now column chromatography is going to follow the same basic principles of TLC, except the samples will be flowing down instead of up. In this case, instead of a plate, we use a, a glass tube. And we put a bed of sand at the bottom of that glass tube, and then fill it up about maybe three quarters of the way with silica gel. And we add our samples to the top of the column. And by forcing liquid through the top, the chemicals will separate, again, based upon their affinity for the uh, stationary phase relative to the mobile phase. Except, unlike TLC, we continue to push the solvent through the system. 
allowing us to collect each one of the individual components of the mixture uh, one by one and hopefully in their pure form. Notice that in the case of column chromatography, we still see the band broadening actually in a much more literal fashion, as we can see the bands getting thicker as they move their way down the column. Here it's pretty clear that uh, band broadening can have a significant effect on our ability to separate two chemicals out if our resolution is too low. Because if the resolution is low due to band broadening, we can expect less distance in between the two components that we're trying to separate. And less distance means that there's more of a likelihood for there to be overlap between those two compounds, as can be seen in the next animation. Here we see that the resolution of this experiment has been uh, severely compromised. In other words, we're seeing very little separation between the two components. Now, had these components not undergone band broadening, they would still be separated. But because they're bleeding out in both directions, what we're seeing is an overlap between the two components, the blue component and the red component. And because of this, we cannot efficiently separate the two of them. Now, band broadening is simply a fact of life. So how do we get around it in practice? In other words, if we're trying to separate two chemicals um, that have very little separation between the two of them, what can we do to make sure that band broadening does not make that, uh, make that separation even more difficult? Well, there are two big strategies for trying to minimize band broadening. And the first is to make sure that you use an appropriate amount of sample uh, for the size of column or TLC plate that you're going to be using. Um, another way of saying this is do not overload your TLC plate or your column uh, with your sample. The second thing that we can do is to make sure that we apply our sample in such a way as that it takes up a minimum volume on the column. In other words, if we're running a column, we don't want to um, add our sample as a solution in 50 milliliters of solvent, uh, but rather we would want to add it in maybe 5 milliliters or 1 milliliter of solvent, the least being the, uh, the optimal amount of volume. By doing this, we are effectively decreasing the original band size uh, so that when band broadening does occur, uh, it will happen at a minimal amount. In this video, we have introduced the concept of band broadening. We have also looked at how band broadening is related to the resolution of an experiment. And finally, we looked at some practical measures we can take to minimize the effects of band broadening in our chromatography experiments. Thank you for watching the video.